Hi, everybody. Welcome to Ask Jenny K. Our topic tonight is, hey, hey, ho, ho, these UFOs have got to go. I even made a sign. It's a protest I can get behind, right? Hey, hey, ho, ho, these UFOs have got to go. Okay. Remember, this is your chance to get answers to your quilting questions. Please chime in, add your questions in the comment section below, and I'll respond to everybody as fast as I possibly can. All right, so um, our topic today is UFOs, dealing with UFOs, how to handle that whole issue, which I'm sure if you're a quilter, you can understand. Uh, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about some of the things that I have going on. This week, I'm teaching a class at Rocky Mountain Sew and Vac with, um, uh, that I call Practically Perfect Plush, and I'm teaching you how to work with Minky. So this is a quilt. This is Wonky Donkey, and I know I've showed it to you guys before, but in the class, I cover all my tips and my tricks so that you will have a successful experience quilting with Minky. It's a little bit different than other, than other fabrics, but I think you will really like the end result. So soft and cuddly. Then the other thing I want to show you guys is this Friday is a first Friday for five kind of Friday. And the quilt I have for you for this Friday is this one. It's called Flowers in the Window. Now, this quilt was actually made from a contest. It was, it was a contest that I entered. I didn't win, but I really learned a lot and enjoyed the process. The pattern itself is going to be quite, it, it's not just a pattern. The pattern is sort of a lesson, it's a color workshop. So if you are afraid of color and if you always stick to the kits because you're intimidated to pick stuff out, this quilt will help you. Working through this project will be a definite help. Or if you love color and you want to learn more about it like I do, again, this one will take you through step by step. I show you my whole entire color process of how I selected the colors and how I do it for lots of different projects that I work on. So be sure to check that out. It will be on sale on my website for $5, which is going to be a very good deal because it won't be that price later on. Trust me. Okay, because it's a big, it's a big pattern. All right, so then, oh yeah, the other thing that I wanted to tell you guys, and I think I shared this the last time we were talking, I've started a weight loss adventure, and I have a YouTube page and a, um, um, uh, a Facebook page called Jenny K Weighs In, and it's just where I kind of document my weight loss adventure of the times I check in, the things I'm feeling, the struggles that I have. So if that's something that relates to you, be sure to check it out. I, I hope you find it encouraging. All right, so now our topic, UFOs. Hey, hey, ho, ho, those UFOs have got to go. <laughs> I love my little sign. All right, so, okay, this is totally funny. I shared I shared this today, right, on Instagram, and then I got a, a like and a comment, wow, I like this, or something like that, from from a guy, a gentleman, who who has a conspiracy theory radio show. So I had to politely explain to him that um, these are un unfinished objects, that it's a quilting term, and um, it, they may or may not, uh, they may, he, he may get it or not, but I just... I just thought that was really funny. No disrespect intended. All right, so it looks, oh my goodness. Okay, so Jenny Thomas just said she has 30 UFOs. I'm so sorry, Jenny. I feel your pain. I really, really do. <laughs> and hopefully we can give you some solutions, some uh, some ways to help work through that. I, I don't even want to count them, but we'll get, we'll get to that part later. Okay, so UFOs. Uh, UFOs, unfinished objects, or do you have pigs, projects in grocery sacks, or wombats? Ready for this? Waste of money, batting, and time. Oh, wombat. <laughs> now, the question to ask is, how did we end up with this mess? We are, we are creative, kind-hearted people. How do we have this huge pile of stuff that we can't stand to look at and we hate to have? Well, for one, I think that our dreams are bigger than our time. We dream about this wonderful project and are so excited, and it's just bigger. It won't fit in the amount of time that we actually have. 
And I think that's part of the problem. Another thing that causes us to lose momentum on a project and push it off to the side is a surprise event. Weddings, babies, graduation, something else that you feel like you've got to make a quilt for, those ones we're working on get pushed to the side. Perhaps when you're working on this project, you've discovered a knowledge gap. Something you don't know, something you're having trouble figuring out how to do. And so it gets pushed to the side. It goes in time out until you can figure out how to fix it. Or you regret that whole project. You get started on it and you think, what was I thinking? I have lost my mind taking on this project. That also goes in the pile. Uh, and also changes in taste, right? You bought something and maybe you don't like it. Or maybe you bought it because all your friends liked it and they were talking about it and you were shopping together and they were fabric shopping enabling you and making you buy more than you wanted. And so you go on with something that you're like, mm, I don't really like it. I don't like it. I don't love it. All right. So I think those are different, different reasons that we end up with these big piles of, of stuff to do. Now the question, you could absolutely ask the question, do I have to get rid or finish all my UFOs? Some people don't. Some people are fine with the stacks of creative chaos. Great, more power to them. Me, no. And I suspect if you're watching this, you have some of those same feelings. For me, if I have too many projects that are undone, it becomes a debt I owe. It becomes a chain around my neck a discouragement. It's not a creative joy and a pleasure to make. It's just, oh, I'm just checking off one more thing on the list. That's not any fun. That's no fun at all. So I think that if we want to have real creative inspiration, if we want to have real pleasure and joy in the work that we're doing, then we need to get rid of the debts that we owe. Okay, so first of all, in getting rid of debts, if you're in a hole, how do you get out of the hole? If you're in a hole pile high with UFOs all around you, <laughs> how do you get out of the hole? First thing you got to do, put down the shovel. Stop buying anything else just for a little while. Just for a while. You can do it. You can do it. Stop buying anything else for a while until you start to get your plan together, until you get what you want to do. So put down the shovel. And then the next step that we want to do, I'm rolling up, I'm rolling up my sleeves here. <laughs> the next step that we want to do is to sort. Now, if you sorted fabric, like I talked about in Taming of the Scrap Monster, if you sorted your fabric, you're already ahead because I'll bet you found several UFOs along the way. Mm-hmm. I know. I know you did. So we want to separate our UFOs into three different piles, okay? One is the love must need. I love that fabric. I must quilt something with this. I need to quilt this project. I need to do this. You know, like it's on your bucket list, right? I still have a Lone Star and I've got all the fabric for it, but that Lone Star king size is on my bucket list and I am gonna do it. Oh, now you guys are, now I now I told you all, you're watching me, oh dear. Okay, so um, that's one pile, need, uh, love must need. Your second pile is like, kinda, sorta. You like it, it's okay. You can see it's fine qualities. You're not sure you wanna really work on it. So it's kinda in that, eh, whatever pile. And then the last pile is hate, nope, nada. This is not the project for me, not at all, nope. So, <laughs> and I think it'll be pretty clear which ones go in that pile. All right, and then your next step in this process to try to sort things out. Um, we're going to take a look at the love pile and I want you to assemble everything you need for finish those projects. Like you pull out something and you say, oh, this just needed yellow fabric for the center. I get some yellow fabric and get those supplies, get those extra things that you need so that you can finish all of the ones that you love. Okay. Now in the like pile, I want you to really think, do you want to spend the time really making something you don't like. Now, there are reasons to do that, absolutely. You can just donate the finished product product when it's done. Somebody else will love it, they'll think it's great. Or you can consider it a learning project, right? Something just to learn or you can experiment on and try it. It doesn't have to be your magnum opus. It can just be something you're practicing on and you send it on its way. Um, and then you come to the hate pile. If you come to the hate pile and there are things in the hate pile, give them away. Just get rid of them. They don't need to be there. They don't need to be there for you. 
at all, someone else will love it. And I'll give you an example. This summer I went um, camping and I took uh, um, a Hawaiian applique with me. And I was doing the needle turn on the Hawaiian applique. And I have to tell you, I hate it. I did not like it. It was too fiddly for me. I just, mm, no, it's not for me. So I contacted one of my friends and I said, hey, are you interested in this? I know you do needle turn applique. Is this something you want? I put all the supplies together along with the book that I got specifically for Hawaiian applique and I just gave it to her. And I think she's happy with it and it's gonna be it's gonna be beautiful when it's done. But just do that if and, and set yourself free. Freedom! <laughs> let yourself free from those things. You don't need them. Okay, now you have your pile of what you love and maybe what you like and you're gonna work through. And let's prioritize what to sew first. I have a couple of suggestions with this. Now first, some of you are list makers. You wanna make a list and you check them off and you feel really good about that. With me, if I made a list of all my UFOs, I think I would barf. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I don't want to. And and I don't, Jenny, you're very brave. To Jenny Thomas, very brave to make your list of 30 UFOs. Wow. Um, no, it would just, it kind of make me, oh, uh, no thanks. So um, list making is not for me. What I decided to do is I'm gonna start with the projects that have the least to finish. What just needs the binding? A hanging sleeve. Um, what needs a label put on? What just needs to be basted and then quilted? What's gonna be really easy for you to finish? What's a small project maybe? Like placemats. Oh, I can finish the placemats. You know, whatever's smaller, finish those first. You'll tackle the small ones and you'll gain more momentum to get you help you get finished through all of them. Then, um, or, or you could also start with deadline projects. Somebody's anniversary is coming up. You got to make that quilt for their anniversary. That's the one to tackle and get it done. Start working on it. Don't push it right up to the deadline. As someone who has stayed up till 4.30 in the morning to finish things, I'm saying don't push it right up to the deadline. <laughs> That's not your best work. Um, and then the last thing you need to ask yourself when you're prioritizing and starting to get things ready, do you need to take a class? Do you need to learn the thing that you took the class for and now you forgot it? Do you need to learn it again? Do you need to talk to a friend to help get help to figure it out? Do that. Get that help, figure it out, get the project done and on its way. Now, I just have a couple more points to consider and one thing to let you know about. A friend of mine started a Facebook page called UFO to OFU. It's um, UFOs to Objects Finished Up, OFU. Check it out. We're kind of supporting each other, posting pictures of what we finished and when we make progress and encouraging each other. Say, yeah, go, good for you, yeah. Okay, so two more points to consider. First one is estimating time. Now, it's important to think about this. My, my husband has a strategy when he estimates his time in, in his business, which is engineering. And um, <clears throat> what he does is he'll take, if he thinks something's gonna take four hours, right, he will, multiply the the number by two, so four becomes eight, it's gonna take eight hours, and then you take it up to the next unit multiplier. So next one from hours is days. So in reality, that project, instead of taking you four hours to complete, is gonna take you eight days. <laughs> and I don't know if it exactly works that way for engineering, but that is something to consider. When you're trying to estimate your time for a project, at least start by doubling the hours. If you think it's gonna take a weekend, one weekend, say, uh-uh, that's probably gonna take two weeks for you to get done all the way finished, okay? Uh, the other thing that I wanted to tell you guys, and I think I told you this before, it's just a sad story that I shared, I think I shared it in the last video, about a woman who came in to donate all of her, her mom's scraps. Her mother had passed away and she had all these UFOs and scraps and purchased fabric and stuff like that in, in these tubs that the lady was gonna donate. And it was sad as a quilter to go through that and see all these things, these unfinished projects, these things that she obviously cared about at one point and now they're not done. So that was, that's a sad thing. So as a quilter, here's what I suggest. Once you get everything sorted, right? You put it in a little box or a bag or something. Write a name of your of a quilting friend, right? Judy. Let's say Judy. All right, Judy, and then and then you put her name in that box. Then if something should happen and you don't finish that quilt and they are going through your things, right? And they find a box that's oh that was for her friend Judy. Let's give that to Judy. Then they give the box to Judy, right? And Judy says oh. 
you were thinking they made me a gift. They were making this for me. And then they'll finish it because they're so thrilled that they got a special gift from you. And then your UFOs will be all finished anyways. All used up. Huh? I think that's a great idea. I love it. I love it. All right. So that's just another thought. Um, please visit my website. And be sure to leave any comments that you have. Feel free to share this video. Leave any comments in the sections below. And visit my website. I'm giving out a free pattern for anybody who signs up my, for my newsletter. And the newsletter will help you keep track of, of the quilts I'm making, what I got going on, the latest videos that I'm going to have, all those things to keep you up to date on that. I'd love to have you join the list. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.